Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. Pretty excited about this tutorial on the stipple illustration effect in Photoshop. If we zoom way in here, you can see there's some really nice details, but what's really cool about this isn't just the way the finished image looks, but the amount of flexibility you have to dial it in. Everything is live here, so you can adjust the size of the dots, the balance between black and white, you can change individual colors of the dots, and because the whole thing is a smart object, you can drop in new images and create artwork on the fly. Let's jump into Photoshop and check out how it works. All right, well, I hope you guys won't mind that for this tutorial, I already put together kind of a basic composition here in Photoshop. This image is 3840 by 2160 pixels. Of course, you don't need to work at this exact size, but something in that neighborhood is a pretty good starting point. I'll also point out that I'm working in 16-bit color. This effect works perfectly fine at 8-bit, but it does use some techniques that really crank the values on these images. And working at 16-bit's just gonna give you a little bit cleaner results. So this really is just a few layers with some simple layer masks. If you're interested in creating this sunbeam pattern, I'll put a couple of very simple steps to do that in the description. As you can see, the skull is pretty low res, just something I copied from an image search. This look is pretty forgiving though, so even a blurry image is going to work fine. What's more important is that it has a nice balance of darks and lights. I put some type in here and use the transform tool to create this kind of perspective transform. And this obviously is not a very refined image, but it's pretty cool once we get into the treatment to see how this starts to come together. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold the shift key and select all of these layers. And I'm going to right click and select convert to smart object. Then we'll get into some filters and adjustments. I'm gonna start by using image adjustments, hue saturation, and here I'm gonna bring the saturation all the way down. And this actually is an optional part of the effect, which obviously makes it black and white. In this instance, I'm actually gonna click the little eyeball and turn that off for now, but we'll check it out later. It's kind of nice to have that in there as the first adjustment and as an option. All right, next in the filter blur section, I'm gonna use Gaussian blur, and I'll set that to just two pixels. In the long run, that's gonna make the little illustration dots just a little bit more scattered. After that, I'm gonna to go to image adjustments levels, and this is kind of optional to have this in here, but it's kind of nice to be able to adjust these values once the effect is put together. For now, I've found this look works well when I drag the midpoint down and make the midtones a little bit brighter. All right, onto the important part to really make the stipple effect happen. I'm actually gonna apply another levels adjustment. I'm making this a separate adjustment because this one serves a completely different purpose. What I'm gonna do here is bring the black output level all the way up to somewhere around 240, maybe even a little bit higher, I'll say 242 here. All right, that's gonna seem like a weird choice, but it'll make sense in a second. The next thing I'm gonna do is in the filter noise section, I'm just gonna use add noise. I'll set it to 100% uniform monochromatic noise. Then after I hit OK, I'm gonna go down to this little slider icon to the right of the add noise filter. I'm gonna double click on that, which will bring up the blending options for that filter. Here, I'm gonna change the blend mode to hard mix. All right, let me zoom way in here and we can see where this is at. So the levels and the noise together created this effect where it's mostly white space with a bunch of single pixel dots. And each of these pixels is gonna be one of those round pen marks or brush marks. To do that, all it's gonna take is using a filter in the other section called minimum. Let me set the preserve value to roundness and that'll create circles. And if I bring the radius up, you can see how this works to create those round dots. I'm gonna leave this at four pixels. And you might see why it was important to make the image so light using that levels adjustment. Without that adjustment, it's just too many dots and the image gets too dark. All right, then I'm gonna use a few more filters to make this look a little bit less like digital confetti and more like something hand drawn. I'll start in the blur section by applying a Gaussian blur. I'll set that to just one pixel. And then after I apply it, I'm gonna make it a little bit more subtle by double clicking on the blending mode slider next to the effect and I'll bring the opacity of this filter down to 70%. Next, I'll get a little bit of texture in the dots using the add noise filter again. I'm gonna set it to 40% and change it back to the more natural looking Gaussian noise, but keep it monochromatic. Then I'm gonna double click on the blending options for this effect and set it to screen mode at 50% opacity. Then I'm gonna use the exact same filter again, add noise, Keep all those settings the same, but this time after I apply it, I'm gonna double click on the blending options and set it to multiply and bring it down to just 10% opacity. And that'll give just a little bit of texture to the kind of white blank paper areas. 
then all these dots are just perfect circles, a little bit too perfect. We can give this whole thing a little bit of irregularity using the filter in the distort section called ripple. And this can be pretty subtle. I'm gonna set the amount to 30% and the size to large. All right, then I'm gonna sharpen the whole thing up a little bit using the filter in the sharpen section, unsharp mask. I'll set this to 50% with a radius of one pixel. And finally, the last step, I'm gonna dial in the color using a hue saturation adjustment. There's something really cool about using hue saturation here. Obviously, you could make an overall adjustment like bringing down the saturation. You'll notice these colors are really saturated. And what's interesting is that they're actually 100% saturated versions of each of these colors that can be targeted. So outside of black and white, all of these dots are 100% red, 100% yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta meaning I can use this dropdown to target and adjust any color with perfect accuracy. So if I wanted this to only have red and yellow dots, I could target the greens and bring the brightness all the way up and make those completely white. Same with the cyans. If I select the blues, I can make those all white, or if I drag it all the way down, it would make all the blue dots black. And what I think creates a little bit more of an authentic looking illustration is if I minimize the amount of colors to just two or three colors. So I've brought everything up to white except for the reds and the yellows. Then I can adjust the yellow to be a little bit more of a bone color. And maybe I'll take the red and shift that to be a little more of a burgundy, something like that. All right, then because these are all live effects, it's pretty awesome how much you can kind of experiment and adjust this look from here. I wish I could rename these effects to keep track of what they do, but I'll put some little labels down here for the video as kind of a reminder. So if I wanted this to be a black and white illustration, I could turn on this very first hue saturation adjustment. I really can't decide whether I like this effect better in black and white or in color. They're both kind of cool. Then you have this first levels adjustment where you can dial in the overall values and maybe brighten or darken things a little bit. In the levels adjustment on top of that, this black output is going to determine how dense the dots are. The minimum filter can give you bigger or smaller dots. Of course, we're able to adjust all these things because this is a smart object, meaning I can always double click the layer icon. That'll take me to the original artwork and I can put something totally different in here. So let's paste in a completely different image, save that, switch back over, and just like that, you have a totally new piece of artwork. All right, well, that wraps it up. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please do hit that like button and be sure to check out the Texture Labs channel. If you create something awesome, I'd love to check it out. Tag me at Texture Labs. Thank you to the texturelabs.org Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching. I will see you next time.